So there you have it. Like I said before, it's a great business to be in, but it's not always the most stress-free choice that you can make. Although it's really sweet when you bring in a check for forty or fifty thousand. Um, situations like that can make it really frustrating. So, again, you know, so many gurus, all they show is the positive side. They show a website full of checks that they've made, and they're real. Every one of them is real. I don't doubt that whatsoever. Um, but they're kind of hesitant to show you the negative side, and there are negatives in this business if you don't know what you're doing. And I can't stress enough that you need an education. This isn't a hobby, it's a business. You know, if you've got a hobby, your hobby could be golf, and you could be the worst golfer in the world and love it for your entire lifetime, and it doesn't make any business, I mean, any, any difference. In this business, you can screw up yourself bad by making the wrong deal. And that's why I always tell people, your first deals, don't do a rehab, don't do a subject two, because all the time we're fixing this house up and all the work that's going on, I'm still making that mortgage payment because I gave that seller my word. Oh, it's a sub two deal. I don't think I brought that up before. But in any case, I just want to show you that the business isn't always that rosy and there are problems that come up. And it's common sense. I'm sure you know that, but now you've seen it firsthand. I don't want this to scare you out of going into the business, though, because it happens to everybody eventually. You're always going to have problems. But let me explain to you how I did this deal so you could, so you understand why I did the deal. That makes perfect sense. Um, oh, let me tell you this first. Before, after I got, after I found all this, and we obviously we had to put the house back together again, so I, I brought a rehabber in to do it. The guy gets 90% done with the rehab. And I mean, we did a lot more than just fix it up. We put in all new carpets, painted everything, uh, but whatever. The guy gets 90% done with the rehab, and he ends up in the hospital for six weeks. He has like diabetes and a heart attack and a stroke and his kidney shut down and all this other stuff. So um, his partner, or not his partner, his assistant, his helper, who was helping him with the deal, who disappeared for a few days, um, he tries to do it on his own and he gets up on this two-story ladder and falls off trying to unboard a window by himself from the outside. <laughs> so I'm telling you, this, this was the house from Hades. But in any case, let me tell you why I did the deal. Let me tell you why it's still a good deal, although it's been quite the headache. The lesson in this is to always buy right. The house is worth about $340,000, $345,000 right now in Chicago. Now, when I bought it two and a half years ago, it was only worth about two ninety, dollars But it's worth about three forty five dollars right now. I took it subject to, which means I put zero money down, so no down payment on this house for me to buy it. No money out of my pocket. I now own the house. It's a two-flat. There's seven bedrooms. It's a nice house. It was fully remodeled before I took it over. Um, but since I took it over, while I was looking for tenants, I had to make that mortgage payment. And that's why I say sub two, you got to have a little money to be able to handle it. But in any case, the mortgage was for two fifteen. so I took the house over that I owed 215000 on, and I rented it out for a couple of years. I didn't make much money. I made about 150 bucks a month. In any case, meanwhile, over that two and a half years or whatever it is, the value shoots up. Now it's worth about 345,000. And I remind you that I only owe 215, which is now down around 210. Now, since I bought it, I've borrowed money against it. I have a system, and I can't go into it now. It'll take a whole episode where I borrow cash money against every sub two I buy. I buy a sub two, I get 10 grand in my pocket plus whatever the option fee is. And I'll, I'll teach you how I do that some other time. But in any case, so I brought 10 grand in already, but I now owe that 10 grand plus interest. So I do have to pay that back. But now I'm sitting there looking at a house that's got 20 something thousand dollars worth of damage to it. Now I did get a nice insurance claim out of it. It was insured. Always make sure you have insurance. I hope I don't even need to tell you that. Even if you don't, you know, just with your private residence, just if you're a renter, you should have insurance. But in any case, the insurance helped, but it didn't help much. They, they gave me three months worth of lost rent, which was about, I don't know, eight grand or something. And they gave me nine or 10,000 bucks to fix the damage. But there was a lot more damage than that. But, you know, they take off wear and tear on the house and they try to get out of everything. And since we were doing repair, doing the repairs, there's other things we just had to do or else half the house would look brand new and half wouldn't. So... It cost us about twenty grand to get all the work done. Um, I brought in a partner, a money partner, who did that repair, who did those repairs. So I didn't put any money down on the house. I didn't put any money into these massive repairs that we needed done. 
Now, the partner didn't put any of her money in either, and here's why. She borrowed it from her IRA. She has a self-directed IRA, so her IRA lent my company the money to fix the house. So she's not out any money, I'm not out any money, and what we did was, we're going to split, we chose a number, and, when we, and it now it's for sale, everything we sell it for above that number, we're going to split 50-50. So I'm happy because the house is in good shape now and it's up for sale. She's happy because she didn't put any money out of her pocket. She just borrowed it from her IRA and now she's going to make some money on it. And we got a nicely, fresh, almost freshly, fully rehabbed house. Remember the guy, um, my rehabber, went south, you know, and he's sick. Roger, I love you. Get better, buddy. But in any case... Um, so it's about 97% rehab. It still needs about three good days with a handyman, and, and it's ready to go, looking good. So, um, again, it could be a risky business. You've got to have your ducks all in a row. You've got to be smart about it. Get an education. Um, if I would have got into this thing by putting money down out of my pocket and done it the wrong way, I would have been screwed when that happened. But since I did it all the right way and I bought right, I'm still in good shape. The house is worth three forty-five. We're sell it now. We'll sell it for two ninety. Is what we're asking for the house. Two ninety. Just sell the house. Somebody else gets a nice new investment. Somebody's going to get a three hundred forty-five thousand dollar house. Three thirty-five, three forty-five. You know, depending on what comps you look at. They're going to get it for two ninety. They're going to be able to rent out those two units, get cash flow, and they got thirty, forty, forty-five thousand dollars equity right off the bat. And we put some money in our pocket. So again, buy smart and you're in good shape. Um, don't let this don't let this video scare you. But I do want to show you both sides of the coin because these things do happen. But if you know what you're doing, you get out of it. You just got to be creative. You just got to be creative. And that's all she wrote. I hope the dead cat didn't scare you. Have a good one. We'll see you next time.